in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. My name is Darius Bryant. My journey to Islam in general began at the age of 13, in which I was very heavily and deeply struggling with how I fit, like basically in the universe. And I grew up as a Christian, and as a Christian, I was taught that Jesus possessed divinity, he was the son of Allah, and I never believed that, and that's something that never intellectually uh, uh, sat right with me, and it's something that I never believed in my heart. But I didn't know which direction to go, because I wasn't an atheist. The more I was taught that Jesus possessed divinity, the more I began to disbelieve in it, because I was a Bible student, I was a church community member, and I would study pretty in-depthly uh, referring to my, my Bible studies about teachings in the Torah and the Bible and what have you. But every time it came up to the point of Jesus possessing divinity, something that I always had a problem with. And whenever I would go to speak with people about the authenticity of the, the quote-unquote divinity of Jesus, peace be upon him, they never gave me answers that were suitable or sustainable or even factual. And it came to the point where I would be so inquisitive about asking about the validity of the divinity of Jesus that when I didn't go to church or when I didn't go to Bible study, people were actually happy. It's like For them it was like a sigh of relief because I was the foremost questioner of this particular theology. And the more I received answers that I knew weren't intellectually favorable, that drove me further and further away from Christianity to the point where I decided to just... Uh, 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 disavow myself um, for Christianity in general. Fortunately, I was never an atheist. I never had this belief that a divine creator does not exist. I always believed that a divine creator, in fact, does exist. It's just that I didn't know how to worship him properly. Fortunately, I was never an atheist. I never had this belief that a divine creator does not exist. I always had the belief that a divine creator, in fact, does exist. It's just that I didn't know how to worship the divine creator properly. So I began to read certain types of material from different sources about different religions, and everything seemed to have something missing until I reached upon uh, seeking information about Islam. Now, ironically, by this time, two, year had, two years had elapsed already. I was already in high school, my freshman year of high school, and I was doing a project, a school project about world religion. And one of my math teachers, may Allah guide him, he saw my interest in Islam in general or religion in general growing and when I expressed my interest in Islam in general he was very uh, empathetic and even though he wasn't Muslim again may Allah guide him he um, uh, dedicated his time and effort to making sure that my quest and thirst for knowledge was quenched and he's the one who actually bought for me my uh, very first translation of the Quran and we went to like a local bookstore in Brooklyn, New York, um, near Master Taqwa, and he bought me my very first translation of the Quran, and I began to read it. And I was reading this translation of the Quran to such an extent that I didn't care about school. I would miss school assignments. I was late handing in assignments, like two months, uh, I was handing in reports two months late because the only thing that I was doing was reading the translation of the Quran. And I was so mesmerized and uh, engaged and uh, 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 drawn to what was saying, what was being said, what was being mentioned rather in the Quran, even in the English language, because at that time I knew no knowledge of the Arabic language other than the fact that it was a language. So even in the English, and this is a testimony to the guidance of Allah, because the guidance of Allah transcends all languages, it transcends all cultures, all ethnicities, all peoples, all times. And in light of that, and because of that, I was drawn more to the Quran into Islam in general because when I was reading, when I would read passages in the Quran about existence, about the purpose of existence, about creation, about Allah's nature, these are questions that I was thinking about and as soon as I was about to think about the question, I already got the answer just from reading the translation and I would say to myself, wow, I was just about to ask about this or I was just about to ask about that and the more this happened, the more I was drawn towards Islam in general. <clears throat> So at the age of 15, by the grace and mercy of Allah, I became Muslim and 15 years later I've been Muslim ever since. But being Muslim definitely is not without challenges and fortunately Allah had given me the honor 
to become Muslim uh, in a pre-9-11 world because in a post-9-11 world there's a lot more obstacles for people who become Muslim and I definitely respect and honor and applaud those who choose to become Muslim in a post-9-11 world because it's that more challenging. And I've heard horror stories from my fellow reverts, from people who become Muslim, who their parents are like adamant, their families are adamant, and they say ridiculous uh, questions to them like, how can you join a religion of terror? How can you uh, join a religion of violence? And to be honest, only Allah knows whether or not someone like me would have had the fortitude to deal with those type of challenges becoming Muslim in a post 9-11 world. As a Muslim growing up in high school, I was like a typical youth, basically. I um, wanted to fit in, I wanted to be popular, so I was willing to do anything and everything to fulfill that. And unfortunately, that caused me to be very irreligious at that point in high school. And then there was a point where, after high school, I began to become more religious. And what ended up happening is that in my yearning and quest to become more religious, I began to become very um, radical and unyielding and merciless to people. And that had a very negative impression on not only people who knew me before I became Muslim, but people who knew me while I was irreligious, and also people I had begun to um, encounter or engage. And this, this placed a very negative taste in their mouths about me personally as a Muslim and Muslims in general. And there was a point where I had really had to stop and reflect as to how I treat people and I realized that the way I was treating people was very wrong and I came at a crossroads in my life as many times in my life even in high school I came to a crossroads in my life as to whether I'm going to be Muslim for real or whether I was going to be riding the fence religiously and the praise for Allah that I made the decision in high school to make a sincere make sincere steps towards becoming more religious and likewise after high school I uh, received, uh, not received, but I reached a cross, another cross, uh, crossroads in my life as to which direction was I going to go. Was I going to become very radical and unyielding and extreme, or whether I was going to make myself more centered? And again, by uh, the grace and mercy of Allah, I decided to take a turn and become more centered. And I've been a better Muslim and a better person for that. I know people who have done work with Y Islam and I really, really respect their efforts to a great deal. And even like the methods of Y Islam and how they have this hotline and how they're so engaging with people, that has, that's actually encouraged me as a daddy to be more engaging with people and to look for new methods and modalities on how to relate more to people and build more connections with people because that's really what da'wah is about, making the connections with people. Because just like I spoke about at the reverse panel here at the Ikhna Convention, it, calling people to Islam is not about making people Muslim or converting people or trying to convert people. Because oftentimes as people who are du'at, people who are callers to Islam or Islamic workers, we have this um, unauthentic notion that we are the ones who are the source of guidance. Where in fact it's Allah who is the source of guidance. Is that we are, or what we hope, and we have hope in Allah to, so that He makes us facilitators of the guidance. We hope that He uses us to guide people. But we, in ourselves, are not the source of guidance. Only Allah is the source of guidance.